Greetings fellow warriors and welcome back to another Mountain Blade 2 Bellalot video. Today we're doing something a little bit different and that is looking at some new or rather old systems the modding master block created for Mountain Blade 2 Bellalot. I'm sure some of you have seen his videos already but I'm willing to bet that the vast majority of you beautiful warriors never heard of them and that's why I want to talk a little bit about some of his videos in today's video so sit back and enjoy. Did you ever feel like Bannerlord's missing those sweet little things that made Warband great? Well, then look no further, because Blockier created some of these beloved systems in Bannerlord. Not as public mods yet, but as proof of concepts, as in what can be done if you spend like one to two hours, maybe a day, modding the game. The first one I want to talk about is the return of a beloved character from Warband. And no, it's not Jeremus. Yet, but the return of the belligerent drunk in taverns. Let's say your day was full of raiding, eating butter and simping for regear. And you're ready to get a drink of the finest meat the tavern can offer and converse a little bit with the locals. But not everyone is down for talks. This system randomly generates drunks you can fight in taverns, just like in Warband, including the exact same dialogue options. If your renown is more than 350, you also unlock another dialogue option and the drunkard apologizes. After successfully knocking him unconscious, you'll get a sword, gold and some roguery perks, which is pretty nice. So this is a rather small addition, but still, it's the little stuff that make games great and Warbent was no exception for that matter. The next system I want to talk about is the return of another beloved character. The Nervous Man Quest, aka Hunt Down Fugitive, where you can help lords hunt down criminals. Again, the entire quest is identical to Bannerlot's predecessor, but for those who don't know or forgot, which I hardly believe, here's a little refresh on what this quest involves. The quest is pretty simple as you need to hunt down a criminal in the village they reside in. The fugitive will always be hidden somewhere far off the village center and will be titled as Nervous Man. To finish the quest, speak to the fugitive and kill him. Completing the quest will have a penalty of minus two relationship points with a random village noble. If you get knocked out during the fight, the fugitive will flee and the quest fails. And yeah, that's all you need to know essentially. Again, even though it's a pretty small thing, it fleshes out the world a little bit more in my opinion, just like with a belligerent drunk. Next up we have Book and Scrolls, which lets you read books and scrolls that give you passive XP in all kinds of skills. Seven scholars will be randomly generated with these items. There are 32 different kinds of readings. Each of them is unique and can be possessed by one person only. And they all have a unique effect, which is indicated with the skill name and the plus sign. Upon successfully finished reading, you will gain XP on that skill. AI lords can also get and read these materials as well, which you can obtain after defeating them in battle. Not only is this a good way to lessen the grind, but also the names of some of them are pretty hilarious. I mean, the book Early Access gives you roguery XP, which is a nice anecdote to the development cycle of Bannerlord. Another highly requested feature that was prevalent in Warband were Manhunters and Deserters. So let's talk about Deserters first and how they come to be. Every unit that is fleeing the battlefield and ends up on the losing side will become a deserter, as you can see on the footage, and a small deserter army will form, which you can engage in combat with. I mean, it just makes sense that some would rather save their life and desert the army, right? Now regarding manhunters, each week towns will assess the bandit and deserter population around them and automatically generate manhunter parties. They have their own troop tree and can only be obtained if you release them from imprisonment. They wander around the map in search of loose bandit and deserter parties to hunt them down. Once they have enough prisoners, they sell them in towns and buy food with gold. Up next we have the bandit ambush mechanic. While visiting villages and towns at night time, bandits may or may not attack you, depending on the security level. If the town has low security, it's more likely that you will experience this encounter. For villages, if there is an active hideout nearby, it's very likely that an ambush will occur. This gives us as the player another reason to clear out hideouts, keep our town security high and an incentive to buy a better civilian outfit, since visiting towns is only possible that way. After defending yourself from this scum, you receive their gold and you can go on about your day. Next up we have nobles and commoners, which makes your initial parent choices more impactful. 
Now, if your parents aren't nobles, you'll start the game without a banner and you'll gain enough recognition just like in Warband. Once you become tier 1, you've gained enough recognition and the system will prompt you to edit your banner. From that moment on, you will continue your campaign with a banner at hand. If your parents are nobles, however, it acts as a regular sandbox game and you start with a banner just like it does in vanilla gameplay. This alone adds a little bit more spice to the role-playing aspect of the game. I remember back in Warband, I always got excited when I got my own banner, since you really had to earn it. The next and last system I want to introduce to you today is something that I've been eagerly anticipating for a long time now. And that is the Feast system. They are held by wealthy and powerful land-owning nobles all over Caradia, specifically those wealthy enough to lord over towns and castles. These being gathering points of the rich and powerful, it is often wise for players to seek entry into them. They can be organized by both the AI and player if conditions are met. You cannot organize a feast under these conditions. You're at war with another kingdom, if there's already a feast being hosted in your kingdom, and if you don't have enough money. AI clan leaders check these conditions every day, and if they are good for feastings, clans start evaluating their financial situation and calculate how many days they can host a feast. For every day of feasting, the AI or even the player will gain stewardship and leadership XP. Each AI clan leader can either reject or accept an invitation. This depends on their distance and relationship with the host. If you accept, you will gain relationship points with the host. If you accept and not attend, you lose relationship and influence. And if you reject, you lose some points as well. When feasts are being held, you will notice some confetti effect above the town. And as you enter the Lord's Hall, you will see musicians entertaining the Lords, which are clapping or just simply enjoying themselves, or even getting drunk, depending on their character traits. For example, if he or she has the character trait calculating, they will read a book rather than getting drunk and mingle with the other Lords. I think this is such an immersive feature and should be simply integrated into the base game in my opinion. What do you think? Now, all there is left to do is... And yeah, I guess that is it for this video. Just checking back from the future since I was about to wrap everything up and Block has released another video on companion reactions for Bannerlord. I won't go into a lot of detail, but your companions will now react to unique locations with culture-dependent stories. They will also share their complaints or praise other companions, depending on how battles went. Or killing villagers and raiding villages may also trigger certain dialogues based on their traits, just like in Warband. So yeah, just mentioning it here since Block is working at such a rapid pace and I wanted to include it as well. So what do you think about these systems being integrated in Bannerlord? Which ones are not really necessary in your opinion and which are necessary? Feel free to comment down below, I'd love to see your take on these. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit that like button. It would help out tremendously. And show me that you want to see more stuff like this in the future. And if you don't want to miss out on the latest Bannerlord news, updates, mods and much much more, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That would also be greatly appreciated. Check out Block's channel since I'm very sure that he'll release a lot more similar stuff in the future. All his videos are also linked in the description down below. Join my Discord server where you can talk with me and other like-minded people about all kinds of stuff. And I see you all in my next video. Become a warrior today, subscribe and bye. Another huge shoutout to Chains, Clinkyman, Ed Kiner and Max M for supporting the channel.